Hey everybody, my name is Simon Williams and welcome back to another video from Northeast Christian Apologetics. Today we're going to be doing another Theology Thursday. And the topic for today's Theology Thursday is going to be around the church. And the verse that we're using to jump into this topic today is going to be 1 Thessalonians 2.14, which reads, For you, brothers and sisters, become imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews. In the ancient Greece and Rome Empire, the word church had a very different meaning than it does today. When we think of the word church today, we think of a building and we think of a place to do worship. The Greek word that we translate now as church was ecclesia. And the Greek word ecclesia means a gathering of citizens that have come out of their homes to assemble in an area. And usually that area was a public place. The Greek word ecclesia is actually a feminine noun in that language. And that actually works great for how we view the bride of Christ, which is the church. The church being the bride of Christ. But to the ancient Greeks, the word ecclesia didn't have any religious significance. It was just a word meant to describe just a group of people, uh, citizens of a particular town that would gather for the purpose of deliberating or the purpose of talking about matters related to the town or the econ economy, society, that, that kind of stuff. It wasn't to talk about religion, it was to talk about the status of their small kingdom or their town or whatever else. The first time we see the word Ecclesia in the New Testament, it's actually used by Jesus himself. And he used the word in order to describe the group of people that gathered around him who uh, understood the importance of the kingdom of God and uh, respected the precepts of the kingdom of God, the laws of his kingdom. So the whole idea of Jesus using the word church in this context was to talk about a gathering of people who were part of the kingdom of God. These are citizens of the kingdom. When we talk about the church, when we talk about the ecclesia, we're talking about the citizens of the kingdom of God. And this group of people is discussing matters related to their citizenship. And the word church can be used to, to describe the whole collective of a kingdom or certain localities of the kingdom. So it doesn't, so there's no size limit associated with it. It's just talking about a gathering of people. Specifically to 1 Thessalonians 2.14, when we see the word church here, it's talking about specific localities. So even though in this verse we're talking about church in a local sense, each local church is supposed to be a proper replica of the overall church itself, the entire kingdom of God. They're supposed to be a positive reflection of what it means to be a citizen of the king, to be a group of citizens of the kingdom of God. However, oftentimes local churches and pretty much all the time, they tend to fail in one area or another. And oftentimes they fail really badly. Jesus, of course, foresaw all this, and so he talks about it in his parables. And uh, one particular area that you can see this clearly is Matthew chapter 13. So what do you think about the word ecclesia? Does it help sharpen your understanding of uh, God and theology and Christianity uh, to get a better view of what ecclesia means? Uh, do you have other aspects or insights of the word that you can share with us? Don't hesitate to leave a comment below or to share this video with your friends and uh, to talk about this matter. Remember that these videos are meant to be discussed and uh, to promote discussion. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please visit us at uh, www.nechristianapologetics.com. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Please share the video and keep learning about uh, Christianity, uh, theology, and apologetics. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you and God bless.